99.5 FM every Thursday evening from 9 to 10 for Heartbeats with DJ Viper and Selector Chino. Heartbeats only on Kaicho Radio. Obey your thirst for the truth. Because you're worth knowing the truth. Quench it with Kaicher Radio. Demerara and Essequibo 99.1 FM. Burbies 99.5 FM. Win $100,000 monthly with Sleepy Sanitary Pads. Sleepy Sanitary Pads are all natural and are made with cotton and bamboo fibers. It is dye and lotion free, hence no irritations or rashes. Sleepy Sanitary Pads are available in two sizes, ultra thin and thick. It is affordable and available nationwide. See press for details. Visit our Sleepy South America Facebook page or call us on 233-2473. Kaichur Radio. Covering Guyana from coast to coast. Demerara and Essequibo 99.1 FM. Burbies 99.5 FM. Kaichur Radio. is 13 hours 30 all across Guyana and it is time for elections and COVID-19 watch with senior journalist of Kaiju News Mr. Leonard Gildari alongside his lawyer co-host Dr. Yog Mahadio all decked in white the other decked in red ready to take on this day good afternoon gentlemen yes uh, good afternoon uh, they're all across this beautiful land of ours it's a little rainy today uh, but we all uh, ready. It's been a very long time. It's been more than 135 days. It's July the 17, 2020. Everybody who's celebrating the birthday today, I want to say happy birthday to you and welcome uh, my beautiful people from right across this land and wherever you would be joining us from overseas. Uh, it is an early day today. We normally start at 1.30, but today we decided uh, to start at 1 o'clock because of uh, that very important uh, court case that is coming up at 2 o'clock. And Kaicho Radio standing by to bring you live coverage of that. And so uh, we want to get right down into things. So today, it is uh, more than four and a half months since that uh, March 2nd elections. And uh, there has been sanctions slapped on several uh, uh, officials of the coalition, lawyers, uh, financiers, and so. This was announced by the uh, U.S. Embassy yesterday. Uh, last evening in room 592, we had had some startling disclosures, including uh, revelations that, uh, uh, or disclosures that even those persons who believe that they are U.S. citizens or green card holders are sitting comfortably in the United States or elsewhere could be subjected to uh, some sort of sanctions, even charges if they are found to be uh, backing uh, uh, undermining the democracy of Guyana or backing anybody who's doing that. So let's get right down to it. Uh, uh, I want to say a good day to my co-host, uh, Dr. Yog Mahadio. How are you doing, sir? Yog, on you, mute your mic. I'm, uh, I, I'm really enjoying myself telling you that. <laughs> Very well, Leonard. I, you know, well in terms of, of um, God's blessings and health, but really sad that we have come to such a day in Guyana when we are making even more negative news all around the world. Guyana is now hitting headlines all around the world as having been sanctions being imposed upon Guyana. That is not somewhere we wanted to be, Leonard, not at all. Absolutely, Yoga. And you know something I was very, very proud over the last uh, two, three years with when we would have made the news in a very positive way because of oil, the discoveries and the developments in Guyana when we would have started production last year, 
um, when we have been talking about uh, what we're getting and how we're going to move and what's going to happen to the second phase. We started having discussion on ensuring that we get value for our money, that the people uh, are, are benefiting because of local content, good provisions, and we wanted to up our level and better protection for the people of this good country. However, that conversation is not, uh, we don't have time for those conversations. That's because elections 2020 has drowned out the roar of anything else, Yoke. And before we get right down into it, I must tell you that this elections and COVID-19 thing has gotten me so bad that um, uh, this morning I decided to take a shave after a long time. Uh, I want <laughs> to get rid of the stubbles that were getting gray. And um, it was scratching. And I did, I did that, and then I decided to put some aftershave uh, lotion. Um, why is that important? Because after I started, you know, putting it in the hand and rubbing it in the hands, it started smelling a little funny. And then I realized <laughs> it. I realized it was bengue, bengue. <laughs> Yoke. So um, this thing has really gotten a lot of people um, very confused, uh, very frustrated. And uh, we have plenty of things to discuss. Last evening, room 592, if you've missed that, you should really take a time out. Go to um, Kaicho Radio on Facebook and YouTube. Pull it up there. I think uh, Dr. Yog Mahadi and myself is sharing uh, uh, snippets of that, uh, uh, little uh, videos of that, because we have two former high-ranking officials of the United States of America, people who are familiar with sanctions, how they work, and so on and uh, what is likely for the Guyana scenario as to what is happening here, the impacts and who are going to be affected and so on. Yoga is going to get right into some of those things, but uh, what I could tell you right now, because I want to go straight into what we have here today in the Kaicho News, July the 17th, uh, July the 17th, 2020, the top headline there is election rigors to be informed of visa revocation. This is the U.S. ambassador. And the story is significant because you would recall that yesterday the U.S. Um, uh, uh, embassy would have held a press conference, and this is one day after U.S. Secretary of State um, uh, Mike Pompeo would have announced that they are with immediate effect sanctions, visa revocations on senior officials in Guyana and others. Uh, the U.S. Embassy did not disclose any names, although names have been surfacing uh, based on sources and so on uh, as of yesterday. What is made very, very clear uh, uh, with that meeting yesterday is that uh, the, the persons who were affected would have known uh, about uh, the visa revocation after they would have attempted to travel or renew those visas. It was uh, later clarified that no, 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 we are going to start uh, informing uh, the, por the affected persons right away. That was made clear by the U.S. Embassy. So the headline there, election rigors to be informed of visa revocation. This is coming from the U.S. Ambassador, Sarah Ann Lynch. CARICOM heads to hold special meeting in Guyana. This is coming up in the new week. This is important, very, very important. The entire region is entirely mad with the situation. They're very upset. And they are, uh, they have never seen something like this, a situation like this, and they want to deal with it. Uh, they know it's rocking the very foundations as to what would have been used to establish the basis, the principles to establish CARICOM, a regional body that uh, deals with trade, uh, uh, togetherness, and everything else. And so we are going to continue to pay attention to that meeting and what comes out of it because the region will be speaking at that meeting and maybe come to some consensus as to the way forward their stance on Guyana, their headquarters in Guyana, CARICOM headquarters in Guyana. So the reconfigures, figures, um, uh, let us make, make it very clear, must be accepted. This is the US, uh, the UK. The UK has joined in uh, the fray now uh, of piling the pressure on Guyana, on the coalition, to ensure that there is a declaration based on the recount. Granger, please step aside. These are the green card holders on the watch, and these are the former U.S. government officials sitting in this program, room 592, last evening with Dr. Yog Mahadi and myself. And uh, based on the questions, uh, they, they would have made it very clear that even if you're a U.S. citizen or a green card holders or other, uh, they, they will be looking at you because what you'll be doing may be in direct um, uh, uh, contradiction to what the stance of the U.S. is. 
uh, maybe Yog will uh, bring a little more highlight so that COVID-19 curfew extended to 8 p.m. We would have moved the cur curfew from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. now to 6 p.m. in the morning. For reason 5 and 6, there's no gun not going to be any curfews uh, until the weekend. So during the week, no curfews. That's because those areas have been relatively okay in terms of the, there's been no uh, uh, person infected there uh, for the longest while. And so they have been, if you enter Region 6, they are uh, checkpoints that you check the temperature and so on. So they have been taking some precaution. They've blocked the borders in the quarantine there on the quarantine river so nobody from Suriname could come over and vice versa. If it is happening, it's not coming on the eyes of the authority. Court sets date to hear Kaitra News publisher lawsuit to quash land deals. Very important, there was a number of land deals, especially in the Ogle East Coast uh, Demerara area there. Uh, very prime uh, former Gaisuko lands that were being sold for hotels and other deals. Uh, there were some questions about the, the, the value of those lands and whether uh, Guyana would have gotten the best deal possible. Well, Kaitra News publisher Glenn Lal has gone to the courts on his own uh, to overturn those land deals, saying that uh, the uh, authorities, including Finance Minister Winston Jordan and Nissel by extension, would not ha have had the authority to, um, to, to handle those transactions at this point in time. And then there's that last headline there. Companies like Rystad Energy wants Guyana to be happy collecting peanuts from Exxon Mobil. Don't forget in all this madness that is happening here, we have a big oil deposit out there. Are we getting the best deal? Well, these are the things we have to continue paying attention. Money in your pocket. If you're not interested in it, we should be interested in it because it, it means better road, better pension, among other things. But let's get right into uh, 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 the business of the day. Yog, uh, last, uh, yesterday, the last two days has been very, very important when it comes to uh, uh, visa revocations, when it comes to the issue of sanctions, when it comes to elections 2020. Let us put it into perspective. Uh, go ahead, Yog. Thank you, Leonard. And yes, today is a very sad day, Leonard. We are making headlines all around the world. <laughs> for being one of the countries in this year 2020 to have sanctions imposed on us. And Leonard, we need to take it into perspective in a number of ways. Sanctions are here. This is no more let them do it or dare, daring them to do it. Two weeks, a week ago, Granger came out and said, we didn't do anything wrong. Why are you imposing sanctions? I think the discussion we had with the two former diplomats in, in the room 592 last night says exactly why. Um, they have, they have uh, come out very, very outspoken. Non-diplomatic language, Leonard, they've called it exactly how they've seen it. And we question them. We grill, we grill these diplomats. I mean, we even ask them. We asked Mr. Douglas Muir about uh, and Ms. Deborah Mazir. What are the consequences if Granger refuses to step down? Because that is a likelihood now. The likelihood is that uh, Claudia Singh might declare a finale the, the winner of these elections. And Granger would say, well, well, no, I don't agree with that decision and I'm not stepping down. So we asked the, the, um, the good lady and the gentleman last night, and they were very outspoken about what could happen. Interestingly, interestingly, mm. on the backdrop, on right on the heels of, of um, U.S. Ambassador Sarah Ann Lynch yesterday, talking and, 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 and um, highlighting that, yes, these visa revocations have taken effect. We found a lot of the APNO AFC operatives were on air all during yesterday. Some of them were starting to say, well, um, you know, you cannot take away our visa because here is what your law says. And they were quoting the U.S. law. They were quoting immigration law. They were quoting everything they could lay their hands on to, to kind of prove to, I don't know who they're trying to impress, that the U.S. cannot take away their visa. So we asked the two um, diplomats last night in our room, 592, you know, um, you know, uh, can can these visa revocations be appealed? Can they be challenged? And that answer was quite plainly no. Um, re these sanctions are imposed because of a number of reasons, and therefore, you, if if you're guilty of these reasons, there is no there is no appeal. And as well, Leonard, they reiterated that it is not the USA alone that is behind these sanctions but all of the 130 countries around the world behind it. They pointed to, they pointed to the ominous nature 
of what is of, of the current government in place and, and what is happening here. And they pointed to the fact that Brazil, the OAS, United States being part of that as well, have all come out. And you rightly mentioned just now, CARICOM, for the, for the second time, ladies and gentlemen, for the second time in history, CARICOM is calling a special summit to address election fraud in Guyana. The second time in history, the first time was, was the 1985 rigged elections under the Desmond Height, again, PNC presidency. So let me just repeat that for emphasis. Second time in history, CARICOM has summoned a special summit to address elections fraud in Guyana. The first time was the 1985 Desmond Height rigging of the elections, and this time is Granger's rigging of these elections. Leonard, this thing, is, this thing goes beyond, beyond the pale. You know, how many countries can boast of the infamy that we are in? Look. Why would you want to boast that? Why would you want to boast yeah, that? I, but that, I understand and the word. That, yeah, and that's why I'm using the word infamy, right? Now, during the PPP reign, let me remind everybody out there, during the PPP reign, there was threat. There was threat of sanctions. And Granger and, and, and Basil Williams and the AFC people were picketing and begging the United States to impose sanctions, right? Kaito News, yours truly, we were all taking the side of democracy. And at one stage, the U.S. In, um, threatened to impose sanctions because the PPP, and you know the reason for them threatening to impose sanctions was what? It was because the PPP was disagreeing that they had to, to accept, receive, and house the, the deportees, right? Mm -hmm. So let, let's get some of these narratives and some of these history very clear, because it was amazing. It was amazing for me to see a, a deportee walked in and threatened um, Charandas Passat in Parliament when, when, when Charandas gave that vote. I mean, Guyanese got to remember these things, Leonard. As well, I want to say, now... What is amazing, and, and we raised this in our, our Room 592 yesterday. Mm -hmm. Look, Karen Cummings, who is supposed to be a, a, the highest diplomat in this country, what did she do? She, she commandeered the GCOM building, walked in there, and threatened all of the international observers, right? So, so this, thing, this thing about, about trying to disrespect everybody, the, the first card was played by Granger and his cabal. And finally, I'll say, Leonard, that the most dangerous, the most, the most, I, I don't have a, an adjective here now, but, but dangerous is probably right. The most dangerous card that Granger's team is now playing is the race card. Granger's operatives were on NCN yesterday saying that the USA is moving and imposing sanctions because of Granger's race. Now, what race is Granger? And therefore, if they're saying that, Leonard, let me ask the people of this, of this beautiful country of Guyana. Should then, should Indo-Guyanese people be angry that sanctions are imposed upon Moses Nagamutu and Kemra Dramjatan? Should Amerindian Guyanese be, be, be angry that, uh, that, um, uh, that sanctions are imposed upon their people? You know, these people are so blinded with finding silly narratives that they're now resorting to the race card. I have keep, kept on reminding them, if they are talking about race, it means they are negating that, that their own APNU is, is comprised of persons of all ethnicities. So this thing, Guyanese need to be very offended at this race talk, because race has nothing to do with this. And you know what? Freddie Kisun said it right. Those people who are pushing this race talk, are they considering what race is Mia uh, Motley or Ralph Gonzalez or, or, or um, uh, Mr. Rowley in Trinidad and Tobago? You know, so, so the, the dangerous card that is now being played is to say, well, all of this thing is being moved against Granger because of race. Whose race? I don't know. Whose ethnicity? I don't know. Because the PPP, the, 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 the TGI, the, all of the other, the, the uh, ANOG and all of the other small parties, they got people of all races, Leonard. So it's an insult to all of us for APNU AFC to all of a sudden consider their race. What race are they talking about? I don't know. And they're insulting every political person, every commentator, every intelligent mind in this country, Leonard. That has to stop. Finally, 
I keep saying, we got to remember these names. We got to remember these persons because Guyanese, maybe they'll be pardoned. Maybe they'll be forgiven. But let us never forgive them to put these persons. I don't care about the party. The party got good people in it. But these persons who have done this to us must not be given a chance to, to rule this country again. Let all the youngsters rise within the PNC and APNU and AFC or whatever and take the helm of their party and we'll support them, but not this set, Leonard. Absolutely, and, and we, we keep talking about the glass being half empty and half full. And uh, many people are seeing, uh, start seeing opportunities, uh, not only from COVID-19, but uh, what is emerging here. And one of the opportunities is that uh, there's going to be a time for the old leaders to be pushed aside or to step aside and there's going to be a need for new leaders and uh, one of the things that you and i have been speaking about you is the need the urgent need for there to be a very very strong opposition no government should be going in there handling our oil revenues our oil uh, wealth and believe that they have absolute power so there is a need for a very strong opposition. This country has some opportunities at the moment uh, that maybe this thing that is happening to us, that we'd have to look at it as an opportunity. Yes, many people may agree, uh, disagree rather. Uh, we have to start looking at things from different perspective. That is the way that we could move from where we are uh, in a very big manner. When you are a strategist, when you would be sitting there maybe in the U.S. and other developed countries, they look for opportunities and opportunities will, will arise not only from the very positive things, but also from the negative things that are uh, that comes. And you're talking about that. Uh, there is many forced for Guyana when it comes to the year 2020. Uh, according to them boys today in Kaichur News, uh, uh, we used to get a time with when there were a lot of deportees in Guyana uh, now we have what you call the revokies. Uh, uh, it is. It sounds funny. It sounds funny, Yog. But these are things that any uh, right-thinking Guyanese people that uh, wants uh, what is best for this country wants our repetition to be very much right up there. These are not things that uh, we should uh, laugh about in terms of what our politicians, what our leaders, and yes, you have an issue with me calling them leaders. The fact is that they, they're holding those positions. It was made very clear that they're the caretaker position. Let us make it very, very clear that you have shamed us. And that is what you see coming from Peeping Tom today. Guyana stands isolated and shamed. And th th these are not headlines that you want to see in the paper. Yo, we should be talking about headline, uh, government announces increase for pensioners. Government announces uh, a minimum wage has been pushed to $100,000. Those are the kind of headlines I want to see, Yog. I want to see that's, better. That's I want true. to see better pay for our policemen, our nurses. When the last time we talked about those nurses and doctors and ambulance drivers who've been just doing a fantastic job, the Ministry of Health, people have been putting themselves out on the line there, literally. We have uh, gone to 19 uh, persons now dead. One of the persons, uh, the most recent one, is uh, somebody in the tortoise yoke. Tortoise, that's in the prime. You're in the prime of your life there. And these are not conversations that we have. And how many days must we continue? And guess what? This isn't going to be over. Today, there's a very important court case. We're going to break at 2 o'clock, thereabouts, as soon as we get a signal from our tech people in our studio here. We're going to break for that. But... This, uh, I think, as early as this weekend, we're going to have the Chief Justice Act in Roxon. George is going to make the decision on that, make the ruling, make her ruling. Uh, guess what is going to happen? It's going to more than likely, because they are digging in the heels, the coalition is, are digging in the heels, uh, and they are going to go straight to the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal, no surprises there. If it goes their way, what's going to happen? We are going to end up at the CCJ. One week, two week, two week tops, we're not going to have anything happening because GCOM hands would be tied. They would be waiting on the court thing. Uh, what uh, do we have? What are some of the options we have in the moment? Yo? So these are things that we should not uh, be very happy about. I look at it and I smile, but then I realize it's a shame. 
they've shamed Gildavi, they've shamed Yoke, they've shamed all Guyana by having That's us be being deemed revokees. It's not a laughing matter. For, it should not be a laughing matter for those people out there who might be reading them. Them boys said today, them boys said we'll do what it's supposed to be doing. But we hold our repetition very, very uh, dearly. And we want to see that when we walk the road, when we land on at a, a Trinidad airport, when we land on in Miami airport and hand our passports there, they should look at us. Hey, I know you guys for having a lot of oil there. Man, I got to take a visit there. Instead, they will remember us from having one of the longest elections and maybe uh, funnily uh, 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 stories about us being in the Guinness Book of World Record for having five declarations, different figures, by a rogue element or rogue elements in the Ghana Elections Commission uh, over a period of 135 days. Is it laughable? It's jailable. Yog? Exactly. You are right. And um, you are right to so address the rogue elements. I mean, Leonard, look, what we have done also is we have forced the, the otherwise careful diplomatic community to start to be very, very explicit in their expressions. Now, you look at another thing that transpired yesterday, no other than the, the U.S. ambassador. And last night, both of the, the um, persons in room 592, Ms. Mizir and, and Mr. Muir's, they spoke to, to, the, to the horrifying um, um, events that are taking place to attack the GCOM chairman, the only person that has in her hands the ability to do what has to happen. And <coughs> she, excuse me, she has come on a tremendous attack from whom? From APNU AFC. You know, Leonard, everybody else, look, when Mingo did what he, what he did, what did we do? We said, okay, we hope Mr. Cheat Lowenfield would do the right thing. Mr. Cheat Lowenfield cheated. We called him out. We, are, we know that the j former judge, Claudette Singh, um, she, is, she is superior. She knows the law. And you know what? I, I always go back to that, that statement she released on or, or around June 16th. Um, that, was, that was very, very, very pointed, very well um, um, worded and expressive, completely. You, you cannot add anything or subtract anything there. Now, at the end of the day, Leonard, this cabal will run around all over the world and they have to come right back to what she expressed a month ago. They cannot get away from that. What she expressed a month ago was reaffirmed by the CCJ. To say, let Mr. Lo, let G com let the secretary comply with what she has already already said. So Leonard, that 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 um, a group of, of compromised persons within within G com, obviously they have been you know they have been uh, listening to some uh, to some intellectual. I wouldn't even say intellectual. Some cheating, some stealing authors, some people who are robbing this country of an opportunity to raise its head and be part of the League of Nations of this world and earth. Absolutely. And let's come back to this very important story, Yog, this, this story here last evening in room 592. I was a little flabbergasted by some of the uh, revelations, uh, some of the disclosures made by the two officials. Um, all of them had Guyana connections. Uh, I think Ms. Mazir. Uh, was somebody whose parents came from Guyana and she would have married in Guyana and went and she rose to one of the top positions in the U.S. policy making. So she's very familiar with Guyana and uh, with the whole process of uh, when it comes to sanctions and so on. And here it is that they are saying it very, very clear. Don't believe that because you are in the United States, uh, maybe a green card holder, where maybe even a citizen, the United States have taken a particular stance on what is happening here. It has nothing to do with freedom of speech. It has to do with what the U.S. is doing to protect its own. And they see Guyana and the, the, the democracy issue here as something that they would want to put big on their agenda. In fact, it is no other than the Secretary of State, the most powerful foreign policy man the foreign minister, uh, 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 in essence, of the United States that is saying 
that uh, he has announced measures. And this is something that would come with full blessings of the entire U.S. government, of the President of the United States. Whether we like Donald Trump or not, at the end of the day, it is the power of the United States that is talking there. And one of the things that came out of the people last and the two persons, Douglas Mears as well as Deborah um, uh, Mazir, is, is that this thing here is very serious. Take it. They pointed out uh, two, I think, two scenarios there. They said you could remember a gentleman by the name or two gentlemen. One of them was Manuel Nor Noriega the big Panamanian uh, strongman, military strongman, who would have uh, uh, been so very powerful, everybody was afraid to touch him. He ended up in the U.S. jail. Uh, Dino Bautese, this is uh, Desi Bautese's son, it was also pointed out, ended up in the U.S. jail. And uh, the, he was no ordinary person. So it's long it, arm it of the meant, U.S. She didn't mention Mr. Khan, <laughs> right? And I didn't want to ask her. But Leonard, I, I want to, uh, if you don't mind, I want to just go back to something you said. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, whenever we talk about Ms. Mizir, we got to remember the good lady is an ex-Marine, right? Um, those things cannot be taken lightly. The discipline, the training, and everything that people go through to be part of the Marine Corps in the USA is, is something that is held with high respect around the world, Leonard. Um, and it was only injury that, that um, forced her to, to, to shorten her tenure there. Now, you mentioned freedom of speech. Indeed, this, the, the, the apologists, I think um, Freddie refers to them as rats and worms, right? Um, that have been touting, uh, uh, sitting in the U.S., sitting in their basements in the U.S.A., they are promulgating, they are propagating an illeg illegalities in Guyana, and they're, they're, they're saying they have a freedom of speech. They have a right to do what they're doing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, freedom of speech and, and any human right, any of our rights that is guaranteed under our constitution or under any other constitution is, is, is a freedom. But it is not a freedom that you must enjoy whilst oppressing others of their equivalent freedom. So I cannot, I cannot um, impose my freedom of speech at the detriment of anybody else's freedom of speech. And Leonard, that is what has been happening. They have been using their freedom, their, their thought of what is freedom, to, to attack, to attack, to, to, to bully, to denigrate all the people who are speaking out. Now look what we have done here, Leonard. In this elections watch, we have opened the lines. People have come on and criticized what you and I are doing. But we have allowed people to have a freedom of expression even here while we are critical of, of, of the, this current cabal. And Leonard, you cannot. Can you then say, well, Granger has a freedom to impose his rights over the people of Guyana? No way. Freedom is not extended to oppression. Freedom is not extended to a man imposing his criminality upon others. Freedom is not, is not allowed to be expressed where one can impose his religious beliefs on another. Freedom is not expressed where you can just decide you want to go steal state resources and because you're president, you can decide to give whoever contracts and we got to accept it. We stood up against that in the past. And we will stand up against it now. So this notion of freedom, and thank you, Leonard. Indeed, the, the, the guests last night, was, they were very expressive, blatantly expressive in calling out people who think they're green card holders, who think they're citizens of the U.S. and think that because of that, they will somehow be protected. What she actually said is that because you're a citizen of the U.S., you could be charged twice. One over there, one here, because you are now, you are now breached even uh, across borders. And so that's something, and she did say, they are all under watch. They are all under scrutiny. Nobody will get away trampling upon human rights, Leonard. Yes, and, and Jog, you know, one of the things I, 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 I learned a lot last, last evening, like for example, and maybe what I'm missing, please fill in the gaps. Like, for example, there are several laws uh, that the U.S. Ha uh, they have. And uh, uh, when you look across uh, the other side of the ocean, like the United Kingdom, Canada, um, even Europe, 
very, very strict laws when it comes to money laundering uh, and so on. But in the U.S. in itself, there's a Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. Uh, there's some others that has to do with taxes and so on. And there's a bunch of stuff. So let, let's say, for example, you're there, you're collecting monies, or you're, you're taking monies from your family, uh, buying a property uh, with it. And, and the, the, the funny thing is, the Americans, uh, they, uh, they work very, very quietly, and they're very systematic in the way that they gather the information. You might not even know. They just put with two clicks of a button, they could uh, look at your tax information and be able to know if you live living above your means or not. Because if you're driving a Ferrari, obviously, or you're living in a big house somewhere down in, in Manhattan, in a penthouse or so, and then your salary is only $2,000 a month. There's uh, something wrong with that picture there. So they're able to connect the dots uh, very, very quickly, and there's a bunch of stuff that you could be uh, charged with. So even collecting some money, putting it in your bank account, we are receiving unconfirmed reports right now from good sources of ours that the process to freeze accounts may have already started, um, and this has to do uh, with uh, officials, uh, government officials, and so on. And uh, it is not easy, it is not easy thinking something like this would have uh, landed in our laps in 2020, Yog. We should be respected, we should uh, uh, be given everything that comes, uh, that should be afforded to a country of the stature of Guyana at this point in time. We've worked on it in the 80s, it was difficult. We went into the 90s. We overcome a lot of the hurdles, the challenges. We started doing well in 2015 when Granger went in there. Lots of hope were pinned on him. He went out 2015, 2018, 2019. Something went wrong with the coalition. Uh, I think there are a lot of people, and you could have seen it being reflected not only in the local government uh, elections, but the criticisms, the growing criticisms over that oil deal. So many things that we could talk about as to where they went wrong. Um, uh, the AFC, which would have helped to gain a lot of votes, uh, even making a big dent uh, on the PPP in Barbies. Uh, they lost all of that in Blackbush Polo, which is an area that I'm familiar with. You go in there right now and you hear the anger in the people's voice, uh, the voices there. Uh, so it is something, they'd have to look very, very deeply what went wrong. Um, however, that's not the conversation for them at the moment. What they would have to start looking at now is whether they could get themselves out of the, the hole that they've dug themselves in right now because they've lost all credibility when it comes to uh, attracting the opposite side. Even if they go now, maybe in the next couple of years, telling the Guyanese people, the, even the, across the divided Indians, uh, the right-thinking Indians, who, who does not probably want to see the PPP uh, and who probably the, uh, would want to give another party a chance. It's going to be very difficult for the APNU AFC now, if there's such a thing exists in the next five years, to uh, reach across that divide and say, come on, I have something to offer you. That's why there are some opportunities I'm saying to you, Yog, and to the people who are listening and watching. Uh, there are some opportunities that arise here, maybe for some new parties, the new parties that have come up. We've seen some very bright lights uh, in the likes of Timothy Jonas and uh, the, um, the, the rest of them, uh, uh, Miss, Miss Lam and so on. Uh, let them come power, let them be very strong. If there are several parties that we could see hitting into parliament, independent voices, loud voices, that is something that is very good, that is going to be very good for Guyana with an oil economy, an oil and gas economy. Yep. Yep, indeed. And Leonard, at the, at the same time, let us, you know, just to keep it in perspective, all of our guests in, in our room 592 and all the discussions you and I have had here, it comes down back to something else. While this cabal, while these rigors um, choose to, to, to steal these elections to stay in power, Leonard, what is happening across the country? And I must tell you, I find it strange. I find it very strange. Ladies and gentlemen, do not rejoice. I find it strange that curfew has been lifted in regions five and six. When there is such a rapid increase of COVID cases, Leonard, they have lifted it in region five and six, except for weekends. I think something is wrong with this picture. 
um, you know, if if there is if the if there is no uh, if the if the controls con it will be discontinued, are we not putting those those regions that that have stayed on top that have implemented their own measures? Are we not now putting them at risk for being so uh, um, e efficient in ensuring that they, they have their controls in place, Leonard? So I want to just bring it right down back to this COVID-19 and how people are suffering in this country and, and when can people expect hope. Now, while you and I are talking here and we are printing and we are discussing and sharing on and having guests in Move 5, Leonard, the truth is it doesn't take away the fact that people are stop punishing, man. People are starving. And we don't know who to turn to to come and talk about this. I'm frustrated, Yog. I, my, my phone has been ringing off. I think I, I, I maybe I want to blame the guys in the studio, but it may be a good thing. It has opened my eyes. I gave out my number a couple of days uh, inadvertently, and people have been calling, and, and literally I'm in tears every morning. I, 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 I'm not ashamed to say it. I, I, it hurts me, Yog, that even yesterday during the program that we would have had in the afternoon, it shook me up a little um, uh, that, you know, you have big men calling, crying, people calling, crying, and there's nothing wrong with crying. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. What I'm saying is that people are really, really hurting people, frustrated. And this is something I think I, if nobody's paying attention, why are you not paying attention? You're the one that is in government. You need to say something. What is it at the, at the risk of getting power? We are we, we beseeching you, put the country for us. Why is nobody putting this country for us, Yog? Why is it that we have to have this office is so very important? What is it about this office that's so important that you would believe that it's more important than the will of the people? Than the will of the people. Exactly, Leonard. Exactly, exactly. But the will of the people really doesn't matter. They, they, you know, what happens here is plain as day. It's as bright light as day. The cabal, all it is interested in is in keeping power. Leonard, let me tell you something. If they were pushing their agenda of wanting to keep power, but over these 135 days, they were also very active in helping people, in doing things for the villagers, in helping people get their, their, their produce to, 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 to where it's needed. If they were using their time and energies towards helping people, Leonard, their people might have then turned around and said, man, but y'all doing good. Why we, why we want to get rid of y'all? They would have earned public sympathy, but they have just been totally focused in spreading a narrative of lies, spreading hate, spreading disaster across this country rather than doing any good, Leonard. You see my point? They could have used this 135 days to share out some stuff, Leonard. Not one of them. When Granger came out and met the people at the, at, at, at the roadside there, not a word about your meals. Or how are you guys getting along economically? Not a care. All they want is power, Leonard. That's all. And that's a, the biggest shame. This is why I believe they must not be forgiven. Um, you know, must not be forgotten. We can forgive and move on, but must not be forgotten. Absolutely. Your people are asking us for us to open the lines. At 2 o'clock, we're going to have to break because uh, at that point in time, I think there's a court case. Uh, anything you want to say for us uh, or quickly before we go straight to the lines? Well, remember tonight we're going to have Mr. Freddie Kisun to continue our discussion we had last night. Yes, and that's going to be very interesting. Freddie, in his own way, uh, saying it as it is, very straight up uh, uh, guy, very strange guy, very quirky guy, but uh, let us see. We are going yeah. to look forward to him. 2267453, let's make the call short and snappy. We want to bring in as much calls as possible so we can hear from you, the people of Guyana. And of course, send us a, some quick messages. We could probably try to read it before 2.30, uh, 2 o'clock. Uh, so let's go straight to the lens. Uh, good That's afternoon, Kali, you on the air. Yes, good afternoon, Kali, you on the air. Good afternoon, um, Yoga and Leonard. Yes, good afternoon, man. My good contribution afternoon. is um, these land that these people, yes, my contribution is these land, the land that they, these people sell in. Yes, go, go, ahead, go, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, these land that people are selling and give other people. People are squatting by the dam don't have a house lot. These people should have gone and squat on those land that they give away 
sell it for little to nothing money because people don't have a land. Mm-hmm. People don't have nowhere to mm-hmm. make a house. Go in and the silent dam and squat. Come up East Coast and you're going to see how much people do have land. Little, little bedroom, one bedroom house, have four or five children in there. They, start, they need to come out of power and give the right president mm-hmm. the position to bring this country forward. And I hope the right decision make today in our country. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Zay Kuala. And, and Yogi, you're so right. There's so many things, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think virtually one of the biggest turn of the spinners of the economy uh, is that housing sector. Had we gotten it right? I, I, I'm not sure what happened. There's so many lands that we have in this country. And somebody's not thinking. Uh, the, just so to, to, to give you an example very quickly, the housing sector uh, in pre-2015, I paid very close attention because I used to be right in the house, housing. And you have transportation, the banking, the lawyers, uh, the uh, hardware stores. Uh, so many things that are benefiting when you have housing going. You go into a new community, people are going to set up shops. They're going to set up so many things, taxi bases. There's need for construction of roads and bridges and so on. Money's spinning. Somebody's not thinking. That is one of the biggest, that would have been one of the biggest things that's happening. Since 2015 to downwards, I understand that it said, you just can't give out lands and you don't put infrastructure, but it's almost going to a halt. And then when you look at the number of persons or the people who would have benefited, uh, there are lots of questions as to whether it was done in a very um, uh, even-handed way. So uh, these are very big questions uh, uh, they, uh, that any new government that goes in there, they would have to fix, uh, uh, I think it's about 25 to 50,000 applications, we've been told, that the central housing and planning has on their system. Uh, have they been able to uh, make any big dent in it? Well, there's no more lands available. They would have probably had to go along the uh, highway or so. Was much work done? To get that happen, we're not sure. What we do know is that big parcels of lands on these banks have been put aside, so uh, a couple of overseas people could have gotten them. And we talk a little more about that as we develop on that. So, Yog, um, uh, we go back to some more calls very quickly. Yes, uh, good afternoon, caller. You're here. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Pretty good, sir. Go ahead. You know, my contribution is this, Leonard. Why did GCOM lawyer? I had to tell the judge, they are waiting until this thing finished. There was no injunction. I think they should have go along with this thing, man. Something is wrong with this thing here. Eh? I this think is not supposed uh, to be, you know, I am not uh, agreeing with that. This, mm-hmm. is, this is really stretching this thing all the time. And I think she's supposed to be more, more efficient in this thing. Mm-hmm. This is my contribution. Thank, Thank you sir. very much. Thank you very much, my brother. Yo, and, and it's a very, very good question. Uh, there has been um, uh, uh, criticisms as to some of the decisions made by the GCOM chair. Um, I'm sure being the experienced person that she is, she would have had a, a thing. And one of the lawyers that was telling me, I'm not sure whether you would agree, the people would agree, but it is what they said. Had she gone ahead and made a decision to fire, insisted that uh, there's no orders and fire low and field, they could have very well seen some some actions there. Now, what is it uh, that is coming up before the court? Is this a final uh, 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 play that is being made by the coalition to see whether they buy some more time? What is it exactly? Had she fired Law and Field, what would have been the play? We don't know. But it may be something very quickly if you want to wade into. Well, Leonard, there, there are a couple of things. You, you are right that caller has a point indeed. Um, Look, indeed, there is no stay. But what Ms. Kim Kite would have expressed in, in, in court is what we all know. That is that the, the chairman has always expressed that as long as something is engaging the attention of the right. court, she's not going to move on it. However, I want to quickly say this. Did it stop her from, uh, from, from insisting that her employee do what is required? Did it stop her? Now, the, the court case is not a court case against Lowenfield. It's a court case calling for certain decisions, certain declarations, and, and certain constitutional matters. She may want to rethink her position with regards to her relationship with her staff, with her secretariat, and probably need to move on in that space because <coughs> by the time the court gives the go-ahead, you need to have an officer in there that can go ahead, Leonard. There is nothing to stop her from moving and, and taking actions against her employees, against the employees of the commission. Mm-hmm. 
Well, uh, let, let, let us see what happens as it develops. Uh, we are where we are at the moment. This afternoon at 2 o'clock, the High Court uh, before Chief Justice Acton Roxon George is set to, to begin hearing that case filed um, uh, before her. And so she is expected in a very efficient manner to uh, listen to this case. She's already met with them early in the week. Uh, these are the representatives, uh, the lawyers and so on to see how they would set the time in today and who's going to speak in which order. And she, uh, I think there has been an announcement also that on Sunday she is going to make her decisions known. Uh, so we are going to talk about that, uh, uh, Yog. On Sunday, I think we have room 592, a special edition, because we would want to yeah. uh, have an examination very quickly before we go to the lines. Uh, the, what, what are some of the plans for that room 592? Well, well what we want to do on Sunday, by, by Sunday night, we'll know exactly what the Chief Justice decision would be. And whether there is an approach for an appeal or not, we don't know. But at, the, at Sunday night, we would have then uh, an educated um, um, presence of what it is facing us. And we'll have a discussion, special weekend special Sunday night to discuss the, the Chief Justice's decision. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to that. I think you're pushing me um, very, very hard, Yog. Uh, but, it, uh, you know, when you push it back against the wall, that's when you know your true potential. Is a caller in line? That's right. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, caller. You're near. Good afternoon. A blessed good afternoon to you. are too hard working, brothers. Thank you very much, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. I hear Mr. Yog said that the other day when Granger come out, he supported them. He asked them if they have a meal. But they, like, they know where the meal coming from. That's what they do there. You understand? So I call it from all the citizens. So if they want to stay in, let me stop pay tax. Mm -hmm. So they don't have no money for getting nowhere. That's my contribution, sir. Thank you very much. And so we go quickly to some text. The GCOM chair is no longer the iron lady, but the elastic woman. This election is stretched out to the max. Um, uh, let's go down a little more. Uh, Land in Guyana is for Guyanese force and overseas investor last. Uh, there are many people who would probably agree with that. Um, and we go on. Uh, let me see what it says here today. The sanction was made to, to people of Guyana who is trying to thwart their democracy with Granger coming out and talk about uh, said sanction, which may can agree that he's thwarting the democracy. Uh, they're looking at mid-August here. The chair should proceed with declaration. Everyone asking me in Grenada what is going on with the Guyana election. My uh, response is, please don't criticize the nation because of a few idiots, thief, and spineless persons. And um, that is coming from somebody, obviously, out of uh, Grenada, Yogi. Uh, so uh, there it is. Let's go straight to the lines. Uh, good afternoon, caller. You're near. Hi, good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon, sir. Um, I just would like, this is uh, both of you, if any one of you guys could uh, answer this. Uh, let's just say, um, these guys in power, Mr. Granger, they disregard everything, and they decide to accept, you know what I mean? They're like, you know what, sanctions is it. What would be some of the consequences or some of the, the things that would affect Guyana as a whole? For one, we would not be able to access our, our revenues. You know what I'm saying? How we, I understand we will start crashing, but what would be the real impact financially from an international perspective? You know, how, what, how really this would impact Guyana? Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, dear. Well, uh, if you would have missed that program, that very um, uh, uh, valuable program last evening in room 592, two persons, two former top officials in the U.S. Uh, government would have been in room 592 to get us on uh, Kaicho Radio, uh, on YouTube, on Facebook, uh, uh, there. It is there. Uh, but you very quickly, I think uh, the two persons, Ms. Mazir as well as uh, Mr. Douglas Mears, would have made it yeah. very clear that there's uh, several layers to sanctions, tighten with re uh, revocation of visa, then freezing of accounts, and then uh, it moves on to properties. And there are several things if you have uh, 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 probably played with the tax systems of the U.S., anti-money laundering and so on. But very quickly, if you want to take it through that. Yes, and, and to that caller, um, if you don't mind, sir, there we have we have also um, chopped, we have made clips of last night's discussion. And so the clip, the part that um, where we discuss the consequences if Granger refuses to step down, 
is an independent click. You can check Mr. Gildar. You can check Kaichori Radio Facebook page. You can check my Facebook page. You will see the clip there as well. Um, but, but ladies and gentlemen, th there are two types of things we got to look at. One, obviously, is, is the sanctions that can come from the wider world. And the second thing is what happens to us who are living here. And, um, you know, th th those are the kind of things that discussions would have to happen. I would not like to discuss uh, what do we do as a people at this stage, Leonard? Because we have to think and think carefully. I'm noticing some strange letters emanating from persons who, who are supposed to be independent commissioners and persons who are supposed to not have a say. They're talking about um, regime change that end up in, um, you know, destabilization and, and stuff like that in other countries. Um, you know, and I'm wondering what's the hidden message there. We got to be very careful that we are not, we are not um, letting our officials um, incite, incite people with their, with their carefully crafted language as well, Leonard. So some of those things that are interesting, um, interestingly poised, I would want to wait until Sunday night after the court decision to see whether GCOM can en get themselves in action. And Leonard, unless, unless the Chief Justice grants a stay, Unless the chief justice said no, uh, grants a physical stay, and because right, there is no there is no stay, there is no injunction, there is no no, no stopping of GCOM. and unless um, um, unless the, the 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 court grants a stay uh, upon GCOM, I would want to hope that Madam um, Claudia Singh can can write to her commissioners and summon a meeting of GCOM at eight o'clock or seven a.m. or six a.m. Monday morning, because by then. I don't want to wait. I don't want to hear, well, we got to receive the written decision of the chief. Well, your, your attorney is in court. Your attorney is listening to everything. Your attorney will be part of the decision. Leonard, there's too much has happened. And I would want to urge all parties, please don't tell us Monday morning that you're waiting on, until you are sent by God or somebody a written submission or a, the written decision of the court. Be present, listen, learn like every other guy needs, and let's move on with Guyana's business. Too long and too much has been allowed there. And, you know, I, I don't want to adopt the elasticity comment of one of the persons there, Leonard, but, you know, it, it's, even elastic has breaking point, even elastic has stretching point, Leonard. And the, the commission, Madam Chairman and everybody there got to agree. I would, I would, I would wish that, that, you know, Mr. Gunraj was in our room 592 and open for discussion. I respect his position that, you know, we cannot really question him at this stage or any of the other commissioners. But I would want to urge ladies and gentlemen of the commission, please, oh, I beg you, on behalf of Al Guyana, you go and meet at 6 o'clock Monday morning. Now, by then you would have known what is the decision from the court. And let's get on with Guyana business. I talk to you in Creolese. And I'm speaking to you in proper English as well. Go and carry out the mandate for which you are there to, to have these elections done with. And, and you're right, Yogi. There's a Robert Narain in our, our, our feed here. He said the three students will need, uh, well, I, I, I can't say that. The three commissioners will uh, need time to study the CCJ decision. So if you're listening to us, commissioners, I have due respect to all of you gentlemen. Uh, I would expect that uh, the, when the court rules on Sunday, that you listen to it and you study it uh, based on that right away because you would be able to inform yourself and not wait until the next day because you did not receive a copy of it. If you want it, we could um, ask you to probably do a printout of it and send it to you guys. We could uh, ask some taxi. I think there's trooper taxi next to you. There's free um, uh, advertisement for my boys on in UG Road there, uh, Yoke. You could probably call it and send it to their addresses, mm -hmm. Yoke, because that, that is a kind of a uh, proactive decisions that we need to take. If nobody else want to do it, I'd pay probably at Aslan to probably open the office. Let me do some photocopies uh, of the actual judgment by the court so we could get it, so they could study it on Sunday evening. And Monday morning at 7 o'clock, they have a meeting so we can move. Uh, the business of this country forward. There's no no other two ways. We've we'll taken off the gloves on you guys, and uh, it has been too long. You're wasting the time of the people. Wasting time there. There's a call online. That's right. Good afternoon, caller. You're here. Hi, guys. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm calling from Port Morant. Port Morant, yes. Yes. And um, you two guys doing a good job. But my contribution today is that suppose Mr. Granger concede, uh, will they lift the, the sanctions and uh, what will be the consequences? 
Thank you very much. That's a, that's a question. Yes, I think I think the koala. Uh, very very good question there. I think the the U.S. Uh, 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 yoga and maybe uh, you would want to to join in here. I think the U.S. is sending that as a warning. Um, I think no countries in the world uh, they would want to put sanctions on anybody. It's just a kind of uh, pressure that they are applying there. And obviously, if you comply, I think uh, it stands to reason that uh, there would be no more sanctions. That they would be. Uh, the visas would be uh, uh, put back. Uh, I'm not sure uh, because if you you revoke the visas, maybe there's a new application process. I'm not sure how that works, but I believe if there's other thing, if they freeze your bank account and so on, they could unfreeze it too. But Yoke? Yes. Um, I look, Leonard. I would be the first if if Mr. Granger and his cabal decide to do the right thing tomorrow. I would be the first to petition, um, you know, lift the sanctions. They have done the right thing because you have imposed sanctions to call on them to do the right thing. Um, and this, this does not go against us as, a, as private citizens to want to ensure we take legal action against all of these people, you know. I'm talking about the international sanctions because, you know, I, I hate to see Guyana's name being paraded internationally about all of these things. So, Leonard, yes, I would want to hope. Um, you know, without wanting to breach or, or accuse any international agency or any government of anything, that if they do the right thing today, tomorrow, um, and, and, and they move ahead, then yes, let it be lifted and let them carry on and let them now face the court. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Yog. Uh, that's something that we have to uh, pay attention to uh, as it develops. Uh, the, let's go straight to another call. Well, no, no, we can't go to any more call. We have the live there. Yes, we we will. Yog, we'll have to take our uh, leave right now and allow our guys in the studio, technical people here. Uh, that is uh, Kevin as well as Raj to do their thing. Unfortunate folks. Unfortunately, we have to bring it to an end so we could go over to the high court where there's a court case on elections. There, we are going to be with you at 7:30 p.m. sharp this evening for room 592 with Dr. Yog Mahadio leading the way there. Freddie Kisman in the house. And we are going to be talking so many things, sanctions, the way forward, among other things. Yoke, thank you very much. Folks, thank, thank you very you. much for joining us. And uh, do have a pleasant rest of the day. Until then, you could remain with us as we bring you live coverage from the court, uh, the arguments, etc. There. Thank you very much.